What's up guys? Today I wanted to show you the power of a cyclone wood burner and why I build them. Why I don't have a conventional fireplace. What we are looking at here is a pile of very, very wet wood. Sometimes you're just in a crunch and you don't have uh, space to manage your wood or time to do it. I got caught in a rainstorm myself. But um, basically this is a, a negative pressure wood burner that uses a blower that's outside the building to pull air into the combustor. That way we don't worry about leaks or anything like that. And it's so effective, as you can see, and there's a massive wet log, two huge logs in there, and they're putting off a pretty good sized flame. What I'm doing is just throwing these chunks of wet wood in there. I'm gonna grab a light real quick so you can see the, uh, the logs. Take this out. That's just a big, massive, stupid chunk of wood that you would never throw in a fireplace. I mean, I'm looking like a total idiot here, but yet I'm kicking off some flames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw these very wet logs. Look at that, just saturated. I'm going to throw these in here and show you what this thing can do and why it's just far better than a conventional fluid draft wood burner. And it doesn't cost any more. In fact, this is cheaper. This is all salvaged parts. Some of those garage heaters or little furnaces can cost up to five to eight hundred bucks. I've seen. This is all free junk. So I'm going to throw all these in here. We'll take a look at them in place and then we'll come back every hour and examine the burn rate of this thing and the amount of heat that it's putting off. As of right now, I am at 400 degrees or so on my reclaimer. The combustor itself is at uh, in the 500 degree range, 600 down below. 600 degrees is when you really start kicking off a lot of thermal radiation where you can just feel it on your face and through your pants. So. I'm gonna throw these in and uh, we'll come back and check it out. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This is totally retarded. Like who would do this in a wood burner? This is a good way to put your fire out, right? So we're gonna check it out. We'll check the time here. We were at 327 on this clock. Whether it's right or wrong, we'll use that to uh, examine the test. And uh, we'll see what happens today with this wet wood burner. I'll take you outside to my fire pit or my uh, my wood storage facility. Definitely the outdoorsy. And uh, this wet mess is what I'm stuck with. I just didn't have the time to do anything with it. And I'm going to be burning that throughout the night here. At least till about 9 o'clock. It's totally soaking wet wood. I throw it in there wet. The hot charcoal fire below dries it out because it's a forced air fire. It can do that. It runs at forged temperatures down below. You guys who are really into energy efficiency, I am using a total of 122 watts of blower power using a waste, all right, I'm sorry, using a DIY flue blower. I almost said waste oil burner. I've been doing so much waste oil burner work right now. I'm like locked in robot mode. So the flu blower I built out of something I found in the trash is pulling 122 watts to um, really get that thing heating up big time. The heat cranking off this thing is insane. I can't imagine how fast it dries that wood. It has no problem drying that wood. You definitely want to only use really big logs when you load this thing this big. If you were to throw wet sticks in here, such a massive fire starts that the thing will glow red hot and will probably melt the impeller. I'm running off of a plastic blower impeller, by the way. Yeah, I know. Kind of crazy. All right, fellas. We're using a real thermometer here today. My thermal couple's tied up. We're at about uh, 68 and a half degrees there. It is 426. Close enough to an hour for me. We're doing this. 
This thing's still running on the same wattage. So I haven't changed anything. As you can see, I have pretty much got the fires of hell in there. Off of some extremely wet wood. See that fire shooting into that hole there? That burns my smoke. That smoke gets burnt inside of this area, so it's not like a, a catalytic cracker. It's more of a thermal cracking configuration that thermally cracks the smoke. So I have almost no smoke coming out of this bad boy. Isn't that freaking cool? Now, in addition to that, that gets this reclaimer screaming hot. I don't even want to be standing by this thing right now. I can feel the radiation coming through my clothing. I think I'm going to back this fan up, blow a little bit more air on it. I have this fan on low. I just run that little sucker on it, little squirrel cage. Definitely need to get this out of here for the radiation melts it. But uh, yeah, that's like an hour later, dude. This thing is screaming hot. Just imagine having something this large at these temperatures in an area this small. Pretty intense amount of heat coming off this bad boy. And I gotta move these wires. So, there you go. I'm gonna throw one more batch of wet wood in this thing while it's in this state right here because I'm using that top wood to dry the wet wood. But um, without the forced air, this would never be possible. There's no way I would get these temperatures. And this wood is soaking wet. And I'm cranking these kind of temperatures. Definitely a pretty cool deal. I've run this pipe along the floor to behave as kind of a uh, radiator coil of some sorts. Now the emissivity or whatever it's called is probably giving me a false reading there, but it's usually within 10 degrees I've found. So it's ballpark. But at any rate, I just wanted to show you guys that I've posted all these videos on this particular burner and have never explained why I choose this setup over just the traditional burner. It has some significant advantages. I can't remember if I've ever touched on that or not, but at any rate, I wanted to show you how wet of lumber I'm throwing in this thing. I'm gonna do it one more time and we'll check it again at about 5.30. It's cranking so much heat right now, I really don't wanna throw anything in there, but as I said, it dries the wood and I haven't had any problems. So let's check out what type of discharge we're seeing. A lot of that right there is just steam. Not sure how much of that smoke. I know it's, it's mostly steam though, because you can hear the water the condensation hitting the fan blade. But that's uh, what we're putting off for that kind of heat. It's a raining wet mess out here. Freezing cold. It ain't the freezing point though. It's like 40 degrees out here, but still. I was wrong on those temperatures, guys. It's actually 39 degrees outside and it was like about 31, 32 when I first come out here. So it was probably below freezing last night. So it took a while for everything in here to heat up. All this metal and stuff that's in here kind of absorbs that first blast of heat. And it takes a while for everything in the room to get hot. There's just so much stuff. So it was probably right around 31 degrees, I'm thinking, when I first came in. And that was the outside temperature. So in here, it was probably a little colder than that. I didn't bother checking the temperature because it didn't dawn on me to do the video until I noticed how cool it is. I can just throw soaking wet massive logs into this thing and it will burn them. I got a freaking uranium fire going in down there in the bottom. So definitely digging the cyclones. You have got to consider this. I'm telling you, man, you don't know what you're missing. Regular burners are nice, but uh, I am uh, loving this thing. So here is the material that I'm getting ready to throw in. It's 
to my next little batch of wood. And it is about 4.37. We'll check back around 5.37 and see uh, what this thing's doing. We'll also throw the wood in there and take a look at it in place. So there it is. The uh, soaking wet wood is in place. And uh, we're going to check this out. See how well things work in one hour. The temperature went up one degree in that time. We're headed for a catastrophe here. Well, maybe not quite a degree. Depending on how you're looking at it, I guess. It definitely moved in that little bit of time. We're going to be hitting 80 degrees here, I can tell. The heat is just screaming. I almost want to turn it down. You can see the fire in there is just flaring hot. It hurts my hand to hold this camera here. That's why I have this heat shielding in place around the burner, which I'm hoping is adequate. We have that uh, stainless steel liner. That's a combustion liner for a fireplace, for a barrel burner. And I have these massive pieces of steel paneling to help reflect that radiation. I'll tell you what, you can feel it. Okay guys, it's not quite been an hour but the combustor is burning so hot and with so much fury, I've had to open the door for about the last half hour. It got very, very hot in here. I wanna show you what is going on in this thing right now. Just flaring hot fire down inside of there, swirling flames directly into that tube. So that's that wood after an hour. Very hot fire, very hot fire. I will probably not bother popping in on that. I need to turn it down is why I'm ending the uh, exhibition here because it's just too freaking hot here. I can feel the radiation kicking off this thing from eight feet away. And I keep opening the door to cool myself off. So there's no point in wasting the wood like this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the blower down to about 110 watts. One of these days, I'm going to put this next to the burner. <laughs> I'm going to run right around there because this thing is just screaming. I mean, look how bright that intake port is. I'll take a reading on the temperature so you can get an idea of what type of energy is kicking off of this thing. Screaming hot. <clears throat> like burn your face off hot, dude. My face is burning off of uh, soaking wet wood, guys. So if you decide you want to install some type of heating system in your shop, this is what you can do with a cyclone. Now, what I mean by cyclone is this particular intake port on the right side is an elbow. It causes a swirl pattern which for whatever reason stops the buffeting that would normally take place in this burner. You have to have that swirl configuration and the fire is allowed to burn in that central vortex of air where the velocity is slowed down. It's a very hot fire. The wood's kind of in the way, but you can sort of see that center swirl. Opening the lid totally changes the flow dynamics inside that combustion area, but you get the point. I'm gonna go ahead and post this. That's what that wood looks like. And we're uh, not quite to the time we, I think we said 537. So there you have it guys. This thing is flaring hot. I'm pushing 800 degrees down on the bottom, which that's probably almost glowing hot. The concrete's probably gonna start blowing up on me down there. I bet you that thing's glowing red hot. Well, it's six o'clock guys. And that is a massive burning hot charcoal fire. Huge heat coming off that thing. So the wet wood definitely lasts longer, ironically. And I kind of wonder if that steam helps clean out my flue system any. So it is uh, 728. I haven't put any wood in this thing. Still hovering at around 70 degrees in here. 
It's a big pile of burning coals right now. It's about three inches deep of hot coals. Completely burned up all of that wet wood. But anyway, I just wanted to add, um, you might want to consider a carbon monoxide meter if you're going to be doing something like this because you just, just in case, if you start getting blurred vision or feeling nauseous or have a slight headache, you could be getting a carbon monoxide leak and that could be caused by something called the Venturi effect. If this fan is blowing on this burner in just a certain way, the air will blow past this nozzle at a high speed and induce a vacuum that was potentially greater than the vacuum the blower is creating. And if the gases inside are being superheated, it can uh, diminish the vacuum power of the blower because they're expanding so much and it will allow a Ventura effect to occasionally pull some carbon monoxide out of that. So I've been keeping an eye on it, nothing yet, but just a thought to uh, definitely be careful because this stuff puts off a lot of carbon monoxide. And I have a top loader, which is even more dangerous, but because there's an induced draft, which is what they call it, I should be good to go. And I do have a meter in place. 